In today's telecom landscape, AI-powered automation is driving significant transformation. Joining me with more on the topic are Sandeep Padki, Senior Vice President and Head of Europe, Communications, Media, Entertainment, and Technology Business at Tech Mahindra, Paul Bosch, CIO of B2C at KPN, Dr. Marion Kenya, Director of Mass Market at Telefonica Germany, and David Link, CEO of Science Logic. Welcome to all of you. I'd like to get some insights on how integrating AI into customer journeys and other processes is working and how that, what that feels like now. Well, that's an interesting topic. Uh, I think that it's, uh, as we look at it today at KPN, that it's actually about three things we always look at. It's indeed the customer process, the front-end processes. How can we actually make the customer journey and the interaction with the customer more convenient using AI, getting to a higher customer experience? The second thing that we're always looking at is getting AI more involved in our telco processes, in our operational processes, to make them move more smoothly. And a third topic I'm always looking at is how can we utilize AI capabilities for our development community to actually become more productive and be more, uh, uh, create higher time to market in developing new code and new software for our customers. Wonderful. Happy to build on that. So at, at Telefonica, we are currently going through a major transformation where we are um, transforming the entire BSS landscape so that we can bring together data in a much more efficient manner. And obviously that data is used in order to serve the customers better. And as, as you rightfully said, the customers do want uh, services in a very different way. Their, their needs and their uh, demand is changing uh, continuously. And if we don't use the data in an adaptive way and use AI for that, we are always behind. And that's one of the major things that we are changing also with our transformation. We are bringing the AI capabilities and new solutions in order to define the next best action for our customers, the next best, best offer. We have a digital co uh, cognitive agents uh, which helps our agents to actually improve the work that they do so when the customer is, is calling they can actually get the best response. Um, we are automating a lot of the operational processes that also gives us efficiency and, and that allows us to also become better for our customers. So there's a lot of dynamic in this space uh, and, and we are trying to do that end-to-end -end from the channels all the way down to our core BSS systems. <coughs> We see, really, this is a once in a lifetime. The adoption of Gen AI is the fastest growing technology we've seen in the history of technology. And there are some pro profound opportunities to change the customer experience, to enhance it in ways that we've never been able to before. And enhance the operational effectiveness where we give the level one engineers level three sophistication, level three insights, so that they can solve problems today and faster in kind of the, the seconds and millisecond time frames versus sometimes longer time frames for complex problems. That's the promise of AI is really has an intersection point right now with operational outcomes that the, the, the teams here are delivering each and every day of the week. In Tech Mahindra, one of the things that we are doing is we have created a completely dedicated AI competency. And one of the things that we saw in a lot of our telco customers is there are AI there are there are AI teams that are there in different parts of the businesses, and if there are multi multi opco uh, kind of operators, you know, where they have multiple countries in there, all of them are trying to design the same thing and create the same set of use cases all over again. So one of the things that we have done is. Whether it is customer experience or networks or engineering, we have brought all the practices on AI together in one single integrated team. Uh, we are trying to make, make sure that uh, get, get the people who are associated with AI together and make sure they are, they are multi-skilled as we, as we go forward. So that's, that's one of the things that we are doing at Tech. I'm interested to get your, your views on how you might think about leveraging AI ops in the near future and what next-gen telcos should be prepared for? 
So shall I take off again? Yeah, so sure. <laughs> now I think that is, uh, as, as, as said before here, it is, it is a once in a lifetime transformation. And the steps that we are still having to make, and it's not about only AI or autonomous networking, but it is really about autonomous operations of the full telco stack. And it really goes about the end-to-end -end processes from the customer all the way to the network and back that can be fully automated, it can be uh, automated with AI capabilities to a unique customer experience that is actually faster than that it is today, which, which means that it adapts to the needs of our customers every day in such a way that we are becoming more and more proactive and I think that will, will really change the world already and that we can actually adapt to your needs even before you already know what your needs are. And I think that is an amazing, amazing task that is lies in front of us. I, I see AI ops, I mean, I, look, I, I'm going to be honest, I think AI ops is one piece of the puzzle in a bigger puzzle piece yeah, or puzzle pattern. Um, I mentioned about the, the transformation that we're currently doing. First, why are we doing it? Is because we do want to get uh, faster at deploying new functionalities and new products and services for our customers. Now, you can't do that by just changing the landscape or you, you only get bits and pieces of it. If you don't adopt, for example, CICD, if you don't adopt DevOps, if you don't adopt the AI and data usage in order to be able to do these auton autonomous deployments, like even going beyond automation, right? So it's really autonomy. Um, you only get a certain part of that impact. So to me, it all goes hand in hand. First is the, uh, let me say, the technology infrastructure where we need to make sure it's independently deployable and is microservices and we can go on and on about all the technological advances there. But this goes just hand in hand with the process automation. It goes hand in hand with DevOps, which then is reliant on CICD. CICD is reliant on the right data. It relies on monitoring end to end. If you can't even monitor end to end, how can you even do your operation? Yeah, up Optimization. So there are so many puzzle pieces that goes together, and, and of course the tagline AI ops is a, is one critical component in this whole thing in order to make sure we get the value to be faster, better for our customers. But one of the things that we are seeing, uh, you know, and that has been a common thread that a lot of customers are telling us is a lot of them are doing consistently use cases. And why are we doing AI? Because we want to achieve a business objective and a business outcome. And can a player like Tech Mahindra come in and deliver those outcomes to us and not just be reliant on use cases? I think that's one of the things that we are doing in TechM, where we are saying, can, can we take everything that we are building in the company, put it all together and commit to our customer an outcome that is going to have a tangible benefit for them and, and, and is able to drive their business, business transformation way faster than it, it, it usually would have been. So that's one of the things that we are busy with. Yeah, I, I would say there is a common theme and AI ops is a catalyst for transformation. It's almost as much of transformation of people and process and tools and technology all coming together. Uh, we have a, a unique moment in time where we can manage very, very large sums of data in very efficient time scales, mm -hmm. unlike ever before. And that gives us some unique opportunities. First order of, uh, first bid order for us is getting the data right. If you don't have really, really good, high quality, high fidelity data, the rest of the operational enhancements and optimizations will fall flat. But the next is processes and looking at that end to end process from the beginning of a user experience all the way through the transaction and back to the user and understanding how that ecosystem of technologies works at that one moment in time, every time, and how do you optimize that session over session over session. Yeah, and maybe still to add to that, I think in the end, for all of us in the telco industry, it is connecting that end-to-end -end processes, but because any technology, also AI or generative AI in our processes, it is in the end about our customer. And we have to make the life of our customer and the services he experienced, that has to be better. That customer journey has to be better. And if we can achieve that, then there's a lot of value in obtaining actually autonomous operations or AI ops. But if we come only from the technology side and start applying uh, AI to that, I think we will fail anyways, because a customer in the end is waiting for something that is better and is serving him better than it is today. 
Miriam, your company introduced a program called Write a few years ago. What's your vision for that program? Yeah, we we um, introduced this program about three years ago. It stands for Radical Architecture and IT Transformation. Um, we are transforming our entire BSS landscape. And even though the name does refer to IT, it actually is broader than that. It's a company transformation. We're completely transforming our business processes in order to prepare ourselves for the future. Um, future in terms of the agility that is required so that we can bring products and services faster to market for our customers. Um, future in terms of being able to offer new offerings for our customers, what we talked about in the beginning in terms of new AI services and you know better self-control on the app for the customers, more digital uh, journeys. Um, and at the same time, we also want to become more efficient in our stack so that we are able to serve customers at lower cost. So all of that goes hand in hand in what we are doing in, 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 as part of our right transformation. And it includes uh, everything from stack consolidation. Uh, we're doing a move towards microservice architecture. We're moving to cloud, so public cloud. Um, we have, for the past three years, not had a single non-cloud native deployment at all. So all our core BSS systems are cloud native. Um, and as mentioned, we are also doing a business transformation as part of this. So it's a major transformation that goes uh, across the entire landscape from the channels to core BSS systems and all the satellite systems jointly with all of our uh, company functions, business, legal, HR, everyone's involved. And, and Paul, I'd like to know about uh, the AI integration when it comes to B2B and, and how that differs from B2C. Sure, sure. So what we did in the B2B area in the, in the past years was also a huge transformation. And we came in mainly in the B2B space. We come from a lot of customization and every customer has actually a specific setup of his technology that is delivered by KPN. So we went through a massive portfolio transformation, actually standardizing a lot of the portfolio, making it more simple and making it possible for the processes to be automated and be further actually with AI developed to have good service and delivery processes for a standardized portfolio to our customers. We did that very well in the SME segment. There's where we started because with small and medium enterprises, you can easily more or less do that also with your legacy base. We created also an open platform for partners and other, other uh, parties to plug into to be able to make a richer portfolio with plug in other capabilities for our customers. And then we started extending that way of working towards our LCE and our corporate segment, standardizing the portfolio. And I think the big change there towards the B2C segment is that in our B2Cs and our mass market segment, you are already much more on the way in a standardized mass market portfolio. It is about volume. It is about really an enormous amount of transactions of already standardized products and portfolio you deliver to the market. And that, that angle of already running a fully standardized volume based uh, mass market deployment where you can easily start using automation or artificial intelligence to optimize your processes versus this environment where you have to work with a lot of micro products that you have to attach to each other to come up with customer delivery and customer services makes the B2B market much more complex to find it in a transformation to also become fully automated and fully autonomous. You know, one of the most important components of this entire transformation is going to be people. And how do you foresee having a future-ready workforce for this um, AI-powered telco future that we have? Listen, I mean, people are going to be fundamental in doing this transformation towards AI. And we at Tech Mahindra, you know, for every technological shift, we have a very industrialized process already in place for several years now where we look at the, the, the technological changes and plan ahead for, for anything that is coming up. In this case, uh, it's slightly different. We are looking at AI not only to upskill and cross-skill the uh, workforce, but also bring in new set of capabilities and competencies. Uh, one of the other areas that uh, our CHRO and, 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 the, and the management team is really focused on, can we look at AI to, to increase the diversity in the workforce? This is one of the key areas that, uh, that we are focused on. Besides that, we have, we have a very clear strategy to, uh, to train our workforce. We have a Gen AI studio that we have 
there is a there is a lot of work that is happening uh, where what we call as telco LLM uh, that is being developed within TechM. Uh, and we also have something called as the Maker's Lab, where we, we trial a lot of new uh, new age technologies as we go forward. But I think making sure that we are we are creating a shift in the diversity quotient uh, of the organization and use AI as an opportunity is something that we are very passionate about. Well, we think about it from a tools perspective, and one of the things that is interesting, uh, we've been experimenting and working with Gen AI for the last four years. And those models we found are very good for human generated content. Chat GPT really took the world by storm over the last two years, uh, but it's human generated content. For many years, 30 plus years, we've been dealing with performance data, numbers, uh, numeric content for the utilization of different parts of the technology we use to deliver telecommunication services. And we found that machine reasoning is a better, more cost-effective business outcome for that. But what's happening now is those two are marrying together. And for the, the tier one help desk person, they really want, in what we're trying to deliver, a co-pilot experience where the technology helps empower a tier one resource to be a tier three knowledge worker. And that helps with diversity, it helps people get up to speed faster. It also leaves the tier three team members to not be interrupted when they're coding with an escalation. So that's really good for all of us and that I think is what this technology coming together, that traditional machine reasoning and Gen AI coming together as one system is gonna afford some amazing opportunities for those entry level workers to get up to speed a lot faster. May I build on this because yes. I see this as super critical as part of our DevOps journey as well. Because a lot of the uh, say highly qualified DevOps engineers cannot spend time on routine monitoring, Correct. routine work in yes. order to make sure that it's called the, the, the basic operations is running. That's and that's where AI ops is helping significantly to bring all the data together to uh, whether it's language model or other AI ops mm -hmm. uh, or autonomous networks related, even bringing it to the next level. It really takes some of that routine work out so that they can focus on the real tough Working. job that the AI cannot uh, model. That's right. And a lot of this their, um, let's say, or the, the, the resources attention goes into creating the next models to develop yes. that next algorithm. Right. So it's a bit of a shift in terms of the workforce and what we need to develop for the next generation so that we can keep developing the next generation of AI ops and AI models. I so appreciate your input, your insights uh, in, on these topics, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Sure. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.